One of humanity's greatest achievements was landing on the moon in 1969. But what most people don't know is that the Apollo 11 moon mission was actually considered a backup plan. NASA's first option was to detonate a nuke on the surface of the moon. So why did NASA want to nuke the moon? And what devastating consequences would it have had for us back on Earth? Well, let's find out. The 1950s saw tensions between the Soviet Union and America rise like never before. Both countries were attempting to exert their dominance and the strength of capitalism and communism. Throughout the world, proxy wars were used as weapons on both sides of the conflict. And for the first time in history, it seemed like Russia was pulling ahead of America in the competitive and cutting-edge space race. America beat Russia in the arms race when it developed and used the first nuclear bomb in Japan at the end of World War II. But after the war came to an end, the biggest countries in the world set their eyes on the sky. The game changed in 1957 when the Soviet Union took a dramatic, huge step forward. The Soviets launched the satellite Sputnik into space where it orbited the Earth in an extreme show of might and power that left the rest of the world shocked. It showed just how much progress Russia had made. To America, Sputnik was downright chilling. If their biggest opponent was able to create a satellite like Sputnik, did that mean they were only a few years away from landing on the moon? America was already hard at work on its own satellites and its own plans to conquer the stars. But when Sputnik was launched, the US government knew it had to do something drastic. They had a lot of plans to show their tremendous capability, and one of them just happened to be shooting a nuclear bomb into the moon. In June of 1959, the US Air Force privately released a study that looked into what would happen if the country planned a Hiroshima-sized explosion on the far side of the moon. The study was started a year before, in 1958, where the federal government fast-tracked the project so they could read about the results and plan the next step. The entire plan, study and premise was codenamed Project A119. And its concept was simple. The American military could launch a bomb into the moon and create a mushroom cloud that would be visible from the surface of the Earth. But why? What would this accomplish? Project A119 was seen as a way to showcase America's strength and improve morale at home. You have to remember that back then, a country creating a massive explosion was impressive and something that many people applauded. And at the time, the American government thought that a massive explosion on the moon would be the most impressive thing they could do as a way to push back against the Soviet Union's gains. The plan was to fire the nuke into the dark side of the moon. The thought was that the brightness of the sun would illuminate the mushroom cloud and allow Americans, and Russians of course, to see the explosion from home. In other words, America nuking the moon would be the biggest advertisement of its force. To us, the idea seems insane now, but back in the 50s, it sounded genius to some. However, would the weapons of the time, as powerful as they were, be able to get the job done in the ways the Air Force wanted. The most mighty nuclear bomb created a yield of 50 megatons of TNT, which is about the same as 3,800 Hiroshima bombs. If the Air Force relied upon that bomb, it would have been enough to create a blast that people could see from Earth. Thanks to proper placement and the strength of the sun, every corner of the globe would have been witness to an epic lunar boom. At the same time, the government would have to be careful and not go overboard with their bombs. If they created a blast too powerful, it really could have a devastating effect on Earth and everything living on it. If a bomb was too mighty, 
it could possibly push the moon out of Earth's orbit. And what would that do? It would affect the tides on Earth, kill countless numbers of marine life, and expose us to meteors like never before. So, while America needed a bomb that was bigger than what they had at the time, they didn't want to risk literally pushing the moon away. There was another problem with nuking the moon. Surprising no one, a stunt like this would have caused serious radiation issues for future lunar missions. A moon that was covered in deadly radiation was something America wanted to avoid because it had big plans to colonize the moon at the time. Those plans, as we know, didn't result in anything, but back in the 1950s and 60s, it seemed possible. The Air Force was already struggling with natural radiation on the moon, and it didn't want to make the problem larger. The moon doesn't have an ozone layer like Earth, so it's exposed to cosmic rays and solar flares. That means the amount of radiation on the moon is much, much higher than what we experience here on Earth. There was no way the scientists running the Air Force, and eventually NASA, wanted to add more fallout and radiation, especially when they thought it could possibly be home to astronauts within a few decades. But would a single bombing of the Moon have an impact on Earth? As we discussed, an explosion too big could drastically alter Earth. But what about just one single nuclear bomb like Project A119 required? Scientists at the time felt quite confident that the explosion wouldn't do anything to Earth or the people living on it. Between the costs, the radiation and a general dislike of the idea, there was just too much working against Project A119. That's why it was shelved before it got too much traction. Although the Air Force paid for an official study about the concept, pushback against nuking the moon was swift and strong, so the project was quietly put on the back burner. Instead of creating another crater in the side of the only moon we have, America instead founded NASA and imagined other ways to set foot in space and put Russia to shame. And in just a decade after Project A119 was created, Americans landed on the moon in one of the most peaceful and amazing moments in human history. But of course, the story doesn't stop there. Recently leaked information has come to light showing that NASA is once again ready to use nuclear weapons. This time, it's to stop a killer asteroid that may be headed straight for Earth. I made a video going over this already, so make sure to click the video on your screen to hear everything there is about NASA's new nuclear plan. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like the video and subscribe for more quality content.